Hi. I've had um, several kind of meetings this past week and um, with like, members of the team and with some of the people from um, other associations and colleges and things. And in each of those places, I just want you to know we are all just so aware of how much you are carrying um, pastorally in your churches and also in your communities too. And we are all praying for you and know that for many of you, you'll be feeling really tired at this time. And I know there's nothing we can do to make it better um, for you in that way, but we are walking alongside you and cheering you on. And one of the principles of the college um, talked about Ephesians in the armour of God and sometimes just to be able to stand firm is enough and is all that we can do. So if this um, reflection finds you just standing, then well done. Um, because sometimes that is all that we can do. That isn't really what I wanted to share with you this time round. I want to share a little bit about where I've kind of got to with my own Bible reading. I don't know, I can't remember if I was telling you that I was decided to start with um, Genesis. Um, and to I really, really wanted to be able to just read Genesis and devotionally and just find um, God in those pages and um, draw close to him through those pages. I've often found some of the Old Testament quite difficult in terms of an encounter with God in them, in, the, in those pages, in those chapters and verses. Um, but I was really open. Well, I got up to like Genesis 30, I think it was. And I realised it really wasn't working. I wasn't finding myself closer to God. In fact, I was just getting like really wound up. And um, and then a couple of people suggested that maybe I should be reading it with a commentary and I might find that more helpful. And they were right. So I'm only up to Genesis 6 again now because I started back again at the beginning, but reading it with a commentary. And I've been reading it with a commentary by Walter Brueggemann. And it's been really, really good. And there's a couple of things that have struck me so far that I thought I would share with you and I found them helpful and maybe you will too. So the first one was the um, Cain and Abel story, which um, I'm sure is very familiar to you. And I always did feel that it was um, a bit unfair that Abel's um, sacrifice was found worthy and Cain's wasn't. And so he was kind of just like dismissed by God. And there's no explanation given. And um, Brueggemann suggests that we read quite a lot into scripture with that. And we make um, some moral kind of reasonings, like saying that maybe, well, Cain didn't offer him the best and Abel offered him the best. And we read that into scripture. But what Brueggemann suggests is that actually, maybe sometimes life is just really unfair and that where God is within that unfairness is a bit of a mystery. And uh, I found that just really, really helpful that sometimes we always just try to find rhymes and reasons um, for what happens. But actually for me to just think that maybe actually life is just sometimes unfair and that not everybody gets dealt the f a fair hand, um, I found helpful. And so I just wanted to share that with you because at this time there seems to be it seems to be unfair for a lot of people. My second reflection on Genesis, which comes out of both the creation stories and, and the flood narrative, um, is that God has, it's, it's, it's like the emotion of God, basically. I think I only ever really engaged with the anger. <laughs> um, that was like a kind of a lens with which I, I read so much of the Old Testament that um, I couldn't see beyond it. But this time round, I'm beginning to see the the grief that God um, expresses and the sense of loss and pain that God expresses because creation doesn't fulfill all that it could be and doesn't fulfill the expectations and the hopes and the desires that God has for it. 
And so you, um, Brueggemann calls it the pathos of God, but it's like the, the emotion of God is, is in those stories. And I've just been really, I just love it. Um, the God that is moved by his creation. And for me, that just really resonates with these times. Um, you know, the body of Christ, we should be moved by the chaos that we are seeing in our communities and in, in our world. We should be moved by the um, isolation there is, by the disconnect that there is. And what's so wonderful in both actually the, the creation story and Cain and Abel and in the flood narrative is that um, God, God's mercy, um, God's comfort, God's presence is, is there at the end in every one of those kind of stories he's like the full stop um he definitely always gets the last word and i just love that um there's like yeah there's the chaos and there's the the confusion and there's the alienation um all of that but then there's god at the at the end, at the full stop, he's the mercy, he's the comfort. And I wonder if we could be that for our communities. And that just means being there for them, showing mercy, being comfort, bringing hope. Um, it's not another programme to run or anything like that, but that sense of um, standing firm and reflecting all that we know to be true about who God is. And I think there's such a witness at this time when people are needing people of hope, stories of hope, they're needing that good news. So my prayer for you today is that you are able to stand firm, that you are able to be the comfort that your church and community needs. That you're able to show the hope and tell the stories of hope that your church and community need to hear. And may God give you the words and the opportunities in which to do that. Amen.